show, everybody. Joseph Robert Camo, the fantasy football counselor. Happy Monday. I want to do an episode today to tell you to take it easy. Yes, you want to be careful with a lot of fantasy football players that are overhyped, right? Players from last year that had big finishes, right? This year, they're on the consensus rankings super high. I just want to tell you to pump the brakes and take it easy on these players going into this episode, guys, because it's very important you don't overpay in your fantasy football draft this season or any season for that matter. So big episode here. I'm going to talk about potential busts and players to take it easy on. Just relax. Let's step back a little bit and analyze some of these players so you don't overpay guys like Alvin Kamara. Hmm, I wonder, new situation there. What's going on? Guys like Christian McCaffrey coming off injury. New offense there. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder if I should take it easy on these guys. We're going to talk about that right here, right now. Before we get into this, guys, make sure you guys pre-order the 16-round draft solution. Believe it or not, the NFL draft will be here in like uh, nine days, 10 days or something like that. It's almost here. So what happens is after a week after the draft, I get to know which players land where, In turn, I get to see the depth charts. In turn, I get to lay out the 16-round draft solution, and I tell you all the optimal players to draft in each round, and I update it monthly up until the season starts, up until I think a few days before the actual NFL season, the kickoff, right? It's going to be here before we know it. So it's very important, guys, that you pre-order 16-round draft solution. Link here below or head on over to thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. This is the Game Changer Draft Kits Are Dead. First ever and only video training you guys are going to be blown away and really dominate your leagues. Believe me, guys. Like having me at the draft with you, you're going to have a huge advantage. So make sure you head on over to thefantasyfootballcounselor.com or simply, guys, click on the link here below if you're watching on YouTube. All right, so which player should we take it easy on? Before you do that, let me remind you, this is a magazine from 2019, and they had, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. on the front. I said, you know, be careful there. Don't do it. Uh, he was drafted uh, first round ADP was where he's being recommended. Antonio Brown was going to a new team to the Raiders. I said, Hey, take it easy. Well, I shouldn't say that. I just started this new segment right now. Take it easy right now. And then uh, Le'Veon Bell was on the first time on the, on the, uh, the jets. And I said, well, listen guys, Le'Veon Bell isn't that good to begin with. And he really was a product of the Steelers offense. People thought I was crazy. So turns out all three of those busted that last year. Le'Veon Bell sucked. He was just, Average at best. Odell Beckham obviously got injured or whatever happened. And Antonio Brown, we know the drama that surrounded him, right? So I said, don't draft these guys yet. These guys were all pretty much first round. Yeah, pretty much first round picks that year. I think Antonio Brown was like early second or something like that. So this is just an example, right? That you don't want to overpay. Last year, if I told you to take it easy, which I did, actually, I didn't say take it easy, but I said just don't draft them. And that's a little abrasive. Now I'm just telling you to take it easy. Let's look back. Uh, but Mike, uh, Michael Thomas, right? I mean, pinnacle Cinderella year. Now you can't predict injuries, but you can predict declines. Decline was happening. Same with Christian McCaffrey coming off pinnacle years in 20, uh, not 2019. And then 2020, they busted, right? Injuries came in, right? So you got to gotta take it easy sometimes. Kenyon Drake, right? Last year, right? Everyone's like, let's draft him early, second round, late first. I said, take it easy. Don't draft him because you got to look. This guy was a backup his whole career. Austin Eckler, backup his whole career. So I know I'm trying to give you guys some context and some background here. So let's talk about, though, this year's guys we should want to take it easy on. That could be fantasy football bus or fantasy football 2021. So we got to be careful. So we're going to go over some names here. Give you guys like five or six or seven or eight names. We'll just roll with it, see what happens here, okay? Let's look at the running back position here. I mean, Christian McCaffrey currently sitting number one on the consensus rankings amongst running backs, right? I want to tell you guys to take it easy for many reasons because this guy was modeling last year. And I understand Joe Welch modeling, blah, blah. I get it. But he was modeling and it shows that he he really promoted these modeling picks. If I'm an athlete, I am honed in and focused on what I'm supposed to be doing. And I know there's sponsorships and promotions. I get it. He was just focused other places, right? Underwear modeling. I mean, you are a running back in the NFL. One of the most toughest positions to do in any physical sports. And you're half naked in modeling pictures. Like that shows to me that right there is enough reason for me to say no Christian McCaffrey to me. Okay. Number two. I know you're like, Joe, that's not good enough. Excuse me, give me some more. Coming off injury. I mean, that that's good enough reason for me. I, I don't, I don't, that that's going to make it suspect situation as well. Another thing I want to talk about as well is the new offense. We've got a totally new offense here. Is Donald going to be the guy? 
I, I don't know. Like, I just don't know what to expect with this offense. I It's just a new situation coming off injury. Now, the good news is, yes, he's going to get the volume. Yes, the talent is there. So you could really, really succeed if you get him. First overall, I just think there's guys with higher ceilings. Again, with Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry's been pretty consistent. So, yes, he's a first-round pick, but I'm just saying take it easy. Just look at the situation. That's all I'm saying. He's going to be suggested as a first overall pick, most likely amongst all other players. I'm just saying it's a new situation. Be cautious, okay? This guy was busy modeling last year, coming off injury in a new offense, okay? Just be careful. That's all I got to say. Make sure you look at the NFL draft, see what they do. Do they bring in another wide receiver to you know take some pressure off of him? Um, is Donald going to get the start? How is he looking in training camp? How do things look? This is a scenario you got to look back, take it easy, and assess the situation. So Christian McCaffrey. Another guy you want to take it easy on here, like really take it easy on, and he's still top 10, is Nick Chubb. Now, trust me, Nick Chubb was great when he was playing, but he was banged up last season. And understand, now this is an interesting statistic, and you could say that you know Nick Chubb was hurt last year, but Kareem Hunt is there. So I'm telling you to take it easy and take a look at Kareem Hunt outscoring Nick Chubb two years in a row in PPR. Now, you, again, you could say that Nick Chubb was hurt. And I, and I get that. But at the end of the day, Kareem Hunt is there and he could produce on a high level, right? So when you have a situation where you have two running backs and they're almost equally as good, give or take, and you could flip a coin on who could be the starter, and I know, and I and I get Nick Chubb will get more of the volume. And I get he's more of a pure runner. And I get he gets more of that opportunity. He's slated as the RB1. But what I'm saying is you want to take it easy on investing a super early pick on a situation where there's two equally as good running backs. I said this last year, sure enough, Nick Chubb busted and Kareem Hunt outscored him in PPR. So again, I just want you to take it easy on that situation as well. Another one you want to take it easy on, I can't believe he's sitting 12th on consensus rankings right now. I, I would assume this is going to change, but Joe Mixon. Now, T. Higgins is there, Joe Burrow coming back healthy. If they make improvements on that O-line, I think they're going to draft a top prospect wide receiver to complement T. Higgins with A.J. Green being gone. So that's going to be good. They're going to have probably two good wide receivers, Joe Burrow coming back. If they make some improvements on the O-line, that's a bonus as well. But Joe Mixon has had, guess what, years to wow us or we're not wowed, and yet he's always drafted early. Like, he's always recommended earlier. So I want you to step back for a second, and I want you to take it easy and understand that his pinnacle year was, I think, 2018. You got, I got to look back. I don't have the stats in front of me. This all off the top of my head because I do the research and I live and breathe this stuff. But I think it was like 2018, he peaked at like 243 points and like eight touchdowns. Like, he's not a high ceiling running back. I don't expect huge things out of him, right? He always gets hurt, suspect offense. It's just, I, I don't trust him yet. He's always ahead of players that are studs. Like, right now, currently sitting ahead of guys like Antonio Gibson, Cam Akers, James Robinson, uh, David Montgomery, uh, Josh Jacobs, and other great talent that I think could easily finish ahead of him, right? So you really want to take it easy and be careful if you are looking at Joe Mixon. I'm personally avoiding him. And again, I explained this in the 16-round draft solution. You know, there's certain players I just don't trust. Years to while, I'm not, I'm not wowed, okay? And that is enough reason to take it easy. Let's take a look at some wide receivers. I'm going to pull up some wide receivers that are pretty high up on the consensus rankings. I'm going to tell you guys, take it easy, Okay. Now, I talked about this one as a fantasy football player to possibly avoid, right? Because you want to avoid certain players because their ADP is going to be really high. But I love the talent here. But the guy I'm talking about is Calvin Ridley, okay? Currently sitting seventh amongst wide receivers in PPR, right? Right ahead of A.J. Brown and behind Michael Thomas, right? Michael Thomas then at six and then Calvin Ridley at seven. And Julio Jones is currently sitting 13th. Understand, Julio Jones was a top five finisher the past three years prior to the 2020 season. So 2017, 18, 19. All these seasons, always finishing in the top, always, unless there was some sort of injury, but he's been relatively healthy, knock on wood, minus last year where he had to deal with a hamstring. And I want to emphasize this, and I want to give you an example how bad this looks, okay? I want you to take it easy, step back, take it easy, have a drink of water, have a drink of juice, whatever you drink, right? Take it easy. I don't understand. Let's talk about this. In 2020, Godwin was put ahead of Mike Evans, Okay, now let's talk about this. Second round ADP, Godwin. Every mock draft I did, every Godwin's coming off in the second round. The mainstream sheep, right? The consensus. Go check my Instagram at Fantasy Football Counselor. I just posted a picture about the sheep. What happens to sheep, right? They just go with the herd, led to the slaughterhouse. 
you got to think outside the box. So Godwin last year was a second round ADP. Evans was a third. And I'm like, hold on a second. So let's talk. Let's talk about this. Let's take it easy. Both these guys are top 10. This was last year in 2020. How is that possible when Brady spreads the ball around, Gronk was coming back, and, you know, new offense, new situation, and, like, Evans is technically the wide receiver one. How is that even possible? I'm like, oh, my God, the mainstream just took, you know, Godwin's big year in 2019 and said, hey, draft him again, uh, you know, ahead of Evans because he finished on top of Evans. I feel the same thing is happening again in, in 2021 where Ridley outperformed Julio Jones. Okay, now this is really messed up, and I'm I'm going to reinforce how messed up the thought process is here. Now, Julio Jones, again, is the one, was injured, and that's why there was a natural increase and in spike of production of Calvin Ridley. Now, the argument when I put this up to the Kinshipsis is that, oh, well, Ridley's younger, he's the future, the yada, yada, yada. Your theory is whack. It doesn't make sense. Julio Jones is the better receiver. He's been the one his entire career. I don't think he's on a decline. He just banged up last year. That's not ridicule this guy for one bad year predicated on one injury. The guy's been consistent, consistent his whole life being a big yardage guy and a PPR monster. And yes, his touchdowns have never been on par with some of the top receivers. He's always had lower touchdowns, but look for a big bounce back year. And another thing that's really flawed here in this whole theory, putting these guys pretty much almost top 10. Now, again, uh, Ridley at seven and Julio at 13, almost top 10 between both these guys, is that Matt Ryan is ranked like, where is he? Six, 16th amongst 15th amongst y, uh, quarterbacks. So this is the guy throwing the ball to, you know, the consensus, high consensus ranked wide receivers, right? So it doesn't make sense. You guys are praising Calvin Ridley, thinking he's going to be this, this amazing receiver. He's good and, and he could have a great year, but you're ridiculing Matt Ryan, putting him 15th. I mean, this is the guy throwing to, to two amazing receivers, right? That you've got ranked in the top 15. So going back to this, I want you to take it easy and look at the situation and think, hey, man, I might just get a, a running back instead of that. We're going to have to see where Ridley's ADP is. Probably going to be late first round, early second. I'd probably go running back because I'm going robust RB anyway and then get Julio later if I can get him, right? Like Because Julio could easily outperform Calvin Ridley all day, all year, right? So this is flawed. This is copy and paste BS. And I'm warning you and I'm telling you this, that this is messed up, okay? So just take it easy and take a look at that situation. Uh, other things I want you guys to take it easy on here is Devontae Adams, okay? Take it easy. Like, he had the best year of his life. He had, like, 18 touchdowns. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers had, like, this MVP Cinderella season. Now, what happens with MVP Cinderella seasons the year after? They go down. It's very unlikely, very unlikely that... These guys duplicate the numbers they had last year. MVP season for Rodgers and, of course, um, Devontae Adams having this phenomenal year, right? With, like, 18 touchdowns and, like, just being the best. So, again, what the mainstream are doing is they're telling you, yes, Adams is the number one receiver. Why? That's simply predicated on last year. They're not looking at the fact that Diggs has a higher ceiling now. He's got more rapport with Josh Allen. They're not looking at a bounce back year of Michael Thomas potentially. Now, Breeze isn't there, so I'm not as high on Michael Thomas, but I'll give you an example. They're not talking about how good Justin Herbert is and how he could really inflate, inflate Keenan Allen's value this year based on that report that they built up this year. They're not saying like Julio Jones could have a big year as well. They're not talking about this stuff. They're just talking about Devontae Adams and having this great year and how he's going to do that again the exact same way. Very unlikely. Now, I was the guy. I was one of the first believers in Devontae Adams before he had his real breakout season a couple years ago. But I will tell you, I'm not going to invest an early draft capital on him. We saw this last year with Michael Thomas. We saw this with Odell Beckham three years in a row where they said draft him in the first round. He busted three years in a row. Last year, they said third round. Busted again. It's just I the rankings are there as kind of a guideline. If you want to win, that's why I created 16 rounds is because it really helps you think outside the box and really gives you players at value. Again, a perfect example, Josh Allen, sixth round last year, recommended in my 16-round draft solution. Justin Jefferson, eighth round, you know, recommended, right? Whereas Lamar Jackson were drafted, you know, recommended in the second round and drafted then. That's a problem. Lamar Jackson was only drafted in the second round last year is because of the year before his number. So take it easy, guys. Do not listen to the mainstream rankings. They will lead you astray. They are lying. Let's do a quarterback here. I want to t to take it easy on here. Uh, you know, they've kind of slid him down here, which is nice, but Aaron Rodgers sitting at sixth. And again, I want you to take it easy on him. 
he's going to be very expensive based on last year. Remember, you were getting him in like the seventh, eighth round last year. Now he had one good, amazing year, bounce back year, MVP. Now everyone's going to be riding his dick. So I'm telling you, just be, take it easy. Look back. There's other value at quarterback. Another guy that's way too overinflated here, and I implore you guys to take it easy on, is Jalen Hurts. I mean, he's ninth right now, ahead of guys like Ryan Tannehill, who's been consistent, Tom Brady, Matt Ryan. Carson Wentz, who's going to be behind a good O-line. Daniel Jones, who's I'm not really crazy about, but has Kenny Galladay, right, if they improve that O-line, right? So Jalen Hurts at ninth is ludicrous. I mean, yes, I see the upside. Yes, I see the ability to run the ball and maybe get a lot of rushing touchdowns. But to have him ninth is absolutely ludicrous. And again, I do see the ceiling, but that's a really high ADP on a guy that's completely unproven who threw like six touchdowns and four interceptions. That's not enough to go on, not to mention he's got zero wide receivers. When you look at quarterback, you want to anchor your team with an ace quarterback that's proven and get yourself a good backup with upside. Now, if I can get Jalen Hurts in the ninth, 10th round as a backup, sure, maybe why not? but not as a guy that's going to be my QB1 taking a risk on a quarterback position, right? Now, unless you get a good backup for him, but again, all the good quarterbacks are going to be gone by the time you're looking at a good backup, okay? So if you invest early on a quarterback, like I'm talking early, like fifth, sixth round, you still want to get a quarterback that's somewhat proven, and I'm telling you to seriously take it easy on Jalen Hurts. I think this is beyond, beyond overrated, okay? So definitely take it easy on him. Uh, let's take a look at a quick tight end here. I mean, with tight end, it's just about always taking it easy with Travis Kelsey. He's always going to come off in the typically right, like the second round. I pump the brakes on that, and I wait on tight end every single year, and I do well with that every single year. So that's it, guys. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. When it comes to overrated players, players that are high on their ADP, you got to step back, step back, look at the situation. Is the quarterback proven, for example, Jalen Hurts? Uh, is the is Christian McCaffrey in a good situation to be the first overall pick? You just got to take a look and take step back and take it easy. Is Calvin Ridley better than Julio Jones? Should I draft him ahead of Julio Jones? Do I want to invest early draft capital on a guy that I know is wide receiver two based on history, but he's only ranked ahead of Julio because of one good year? You want to take it easy and step back and think, right? Because so many people just do, 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 right? Do, 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 do. There's no thinking. You got to step back. Common sense is not that common. Step back. Instead of just doing, think. Think it through. It's like chess, right? If you make a move in chess and you move too early, you're just going to get picked off, right? You got to think, okay, if I'm going to move this here, what's going to happen, right? Fantasy football is like chess, right? You got you to gotta be 10 steps ahead, but it's not taught like that. It's just taught in the way of here's toss, here's top finishers, draft them again in that order. That's not how you're going to win your league, Okay. Make sure you guys subscribe, leave a thumbs up, <clears throat> get the 16-round draft solution. And again, remember, don't overpay. Take it easy and look at the stats, guys. I'm out. Subscribe, leave a thumbs up. It helps the channel. I appreciate you guys. It means the world to me. 2020 Fantasy Football will be here before we know it. Go get 16 rounds. We'll talk soon. Appreciate you.